Hello, welcome to Student Research Day 2020. We're glad you're here. This year's event is so special. It is our first totally virtual Student Research Day. We've been preparing for weeks to have you step into this wonderful cyber celebration of students' undergraduate research, creative work, and today we're able to really step back and tell them how much their work means to us and to celebrate their accomplishments in research and creative endeavors. Student Research Day is a treasured program on our campus. It is a campus-wide activity that attracts student researchers from every school and nearly every department. Like this year's program, the programs in the past have featured work from our students in music, art, humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, mathematics, business, nursing, and education. This kind of a program is one that has had a place in our history for over a decade, but we know that today is really a landmark as all of the work, the celebration, the presentations, move online. A complex endeavor, like a totally virtual Student Research Day 2020, only happens because of the contributions of many people. Several thank yous want to begin our program today. A hearty thank you to every single student who conducted research and who is participating in our program. A big thank you to all of the faculty members who have carefully mentored and stewarded that research through the last several weeks, months, and in the case of the senior honors thesis work, maybe the last several years. A huge thank you to the Student Research Day Planning Committee, the faculty members and the actually our administrator who has worked with us for several months have stepped up their contributions in the last few days, working nearly around the clock to make sure all presentations are accounted for and all presentation judging happened. A huge thank you to the faculty judges and the community partner judge who also spent hours in the last few days reviewing all of the excellent research presentations and creative work that have been submitted by our students. A big thank you to Academic Affairs who is funding this event today. And a huge thank you to all of you who have joined us for the live portions of our event today. The afternoon or the next hour is gonna go something like this. In a few, I'll conclude my introduction and I'll introduce you to our keynote speaker, Cassidy Klaus. After Cassidy has concluded her remarks, she'll toss the program back to me and I'll be announcing our award winners. This afternoon, we'll announce our award winners in several categories. First, our oral presenters. Second, our poster presenters. And then a competition that occurred between our honors thesis presenters. After the award ceremony and our conclusion, you can take a look in the next few days for links to all of the presentations that won awards and all of the entrants in our Student Research Day presentation categories this year. Students, we need you to return to us those release forms so that we can make your work publicly accessible in the next few days on the Student Research Day website. Again, we want to welcome you to our 100% virtual Student Research Day 2020 program today. My name is Angie Cooksey. I co-chaired this event along with TJ Rivard. Again, a hearty thank you to our planning committee, a hearty thank you to our judges, a huge thank you to the students and the faculty who made this program happen. Another big thank you is reserved for our keynote speaker today, Ms. Cassidy Klaus. I came to know Cassidy several years ago as a presenter at Student Research Day, just like this program this afternoon. 
In 2017, Cassidy presented her excellent work that she had completed with a faculty member coming back in 2018 to present a summer research scholarship project and then joining us again for Student Research Day in 2019, presenting her senior honors thesis. Cassidy's distinguished work ranges from her work in humanities, social sciences, the hard sciences, but she also did distinguished work in service learning and civic engagement. After completing a graduate degree last year at Ball State University, Cassidy began her work in law school at Indiana University McKinney School of Law. She is truly a student researcher of whom we are very proud. It is my honor to introduce her today as our keynote speaker. With no further ado, Cassidy Klaus. Thank you, Angie. Uh, hello to everybody. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, first, I would like to commend the IUE Student Research Day folks for their adaptability, allowing us to still recognize the students who have worked so hard on their research. To introduce myself a bit, as Angie mentioned, I'm Cassidy Klaus. I grew up in Newcastle, graduated from IU East in the honors program in 2018 with my degrees in human life science and psychology. I then graduated from Ball State in 2019 with my master's of arts in social psychology. And now I'm concluding my first year as a Kennedy Scholar at the IU McKinney School of Law at IUPUI. I know that I don't have to tell this group <laughs> why research is so important, but I thought it appropriate here to share why research is valuable to me. First, it allows us to cut through the noise of difficult issues and learn about the complexities as we confront them head on. Researchers are well positioned to be the ones to tackle and disentangle complex issues, be it gravitropism and mutated Arab Arabidopsis thaliana, or perhaps the whole of American healthcare, <laughs> rather than backing away from them. Now, I didn't bring any personality tests to administer to you all, but I imagine that every person watching now would rate fairly high in need for cognition and need for closure and make regular use of their system two central routes of thinking. And that is a really, really powerful thing in itself. Second, it just feels good to understand something. Isn't it incredible that we can go from knowing nothing about a topic to becoming an expert in it? Even if it's super niche, like learning a new cell formula in Excel, I find that developing a working knowledge on the topic that was previously foreign to me gives me the motivation to continue to learn the next niche thing. And before you know it, when you add up all of these niche knowledge area groups, you might even be an expert in that area. Finally, and I think that this is the most important, at least to me, is that research is a way to connect with others. I charge each of you watching to engage in civic professionalism, step down from the ivory tower, try to think about how to communicate your findings to a larger audience than those who are in the same field as you, and integrate yourself into your community to try to be that bridge between academia and everyday life. One of my all time favorite quotes is by Einstein. If you cannot explain it simply enough for a six year old to understand, then you don't understand it yourself. And I think there's a big lesson to be taken from that, not only to ensure that your communications are clear, but also as a tool to double check your own understanding. Um, there actually is a second lesson to be taken from this quote, and that is that Einstein never actually said that, <laughs> despite wide attribution. The closest thing to this quote ever being said was in a 1955 article about Einstein, where Ernest Rutherford, the physicist who theorized the nuclear atomic model, is loosely attributed to saying, an alleged scientific discovery has no merit unless it can be explained to a barmaid. I still quite prefer the Einstein formulation, but it stands testament that you should always check your sources and you should never rely on general acceptance, authority, or face value alone. When I first came to IU East, I was interested in psychology, but convinced that I was gonna become a psychiatrist. After a year of working at Reed and doing the absolute bare medical minimum, I mean, I was just pricking fingers to take blood sugars. Um, it quickly informed me that medical school was not going to be in my future. <laughs> uh, however, I still loved my hard science and math courses. And I was still fascinated by medicine, even if I knew that I wasn't going to practice it. Furthermore, I enjoyed the structure of the scientific method. I reached out to Dr. Dam in the middle of my sophomore year to explain the possibility or to explore the possibility of working with him to fulfill my honors program capstone requirement. Fortunately, not only was he willing to work with me, but he had been hoping for student interest as he was in the midst of establishing a neuroscience laboratory. 
I remember having our very first lab meeting with another student, Zach Katrin, who had similarly expressed interest. It was a bit overwhelming because it was so new and Dr. Dam had so many great ideas, but it's an invigorating feeling to be out in front of a new venture. That first year, we focused on obtaining IRB permission, doing extensive literature reviews from which to create our study design and methods, and choosing stimuli from the International Effective Picture System. Dr. Dam was able to secure funding from the school for the pressure sensor sensors and the mechanism we developed to conduct our study. We got very busy the following year collecting data. The instrument we designed held a pressure sensor. It was sort of like a super sensitive scale, but it held it upright so that a person sitting down could push forward or pull towards, towards themselves. As ingenious as the idea was for our purposes, it had one small caveat, and that is that it was fully manual, which is to say that we had to flip the sensor around, unscrewing and refastening three wing nuts every time after every trial, and there were six trials for each of our 50-something participants. Nonetheless, that whole workout worked out very well for us and it was worth our time. <laughs> after that first year of research, the HSS dean at the time, Ross Alexander, saw the good work that we were doing and went out of his way to create a scholarship for each of the three students who now made up the lab. Now, I want everyone to just take a moment to think about the gravity of that. None of us had any expectation of funding as the result of our work, but IU East was so dedicated to enabling student experience that they found funds to create a brand new scholarship. Wow. In that same year, I was awarded the Joan Passett Research Award through the Honors Program, and then one year later, I was awarded the Fred Grossmeyer Psych Psychology Scholarship. And I don't list these to gloat, but to alert you all to the opportunities that IU East works very hard to make available to students. At Student Research Day in 2017, each member of the Neuroscience Lab presented and each left with an award. For our very young lab, this was quite the achievement. This now brings us up to the summer of my junior year, where I received one of the Summer Research Scholar Grants. The funny thing about collecting over a million datum points is that they don't really tell you much by themselves. <laughs> Data has to be analyzed, organized, and interpreted. Much of that summer was spent teaching myself R, which is a crowdsourced software for statistical analysis, which was essentially teaching myself the basics of coding, and I found out that I'm not very good at coding. <laughs> However, I was motivated that summer by more than just the grant and my desire to learn alone. Our research had been accepted as a poster presentation to the American Psychological Association Convention in Washington, D.C. that August. It was so gratifying to present at such a massive professional conference as an undergraduate student. It says much about the priorities of IU East that they were willing to fully fund students to take advantage of opportunities like this. Being surrounded by intelligent, accomplished individuals in my perspective field, watching firsthand presentations on the newest breakthroughs in behavioral genetics and social cognition, along with learning about trends and policies that the APA and psychologists were pushing for, was an incredibly inspiring experience. My experience in DC made my Student Research Day Scholars pro presentation, titled Motivating Self-Referenced Approach and Avoidance Movements with Emotional Images, all the more interesting. And it's always good to show a benefactor that their investment was well spent. While research was clearly an important part of my time at IU East, it was far from the only thing on which I spent my time. I was a supplemental instructor for physics. I was an admissions ambassador through which I met the 2017 US Open Championship winner, Sloan Stevens, as well as IU President McRobbie. I was able to interview achieved alumni as the bicentennial intern. I was president of the Student Government Association where I sat on several committees, including the search committee for the IU student trustee. I organized the first ever student government symposium that included student government representatives from IU, Ivy Tech, and Earlham. And it was the first ev event to unite all of those Richmond powerhouses. And I also, this one's a little bit different from the rest, sat on the drop seat of a very cold dunk tank at a student organization fair. <laughs> I was also on homecoming court and I expanded existing psychology, psychology club programs to include the trunk or treat, which I sincerely hope that each of you have taken the opportunity to attend. And I was also heavily involved in service learning. I'd like to take a moment to note that I can recall all of these wonderful memories with ease because to this day, I have a very large Rubbermaid tote full of t-shirts to commemorate every single occasion. <laughs> Working with Ann Tobin in service learning was and is one of the best things that I've done for myself. I reached out to her for information about our program, working with residents with dementia and art, 
and I left our meeting with a job as student coordinator. From there, I was presented with opportunities to present program outcomes to the IUB Sport of Advisors, meet community leaders through events like Girls Inc. and Night in Cuba reception at the Forest Hills Country Club. It was a very fun event. Design evidence-based workshops for our tutors and students and work directly with K-12 students. And as an aside for students watching this, math tutoring is a wonderful review strategy for the quantitative reasoning for the GRE. I also was able to go on two study abroad programs. One was to Florence, Italy during my freshman summer with the fine arts program. And one went to London, Vienna and Leipzig with the psychology program. And we left for that trip the day after graduation. Both were eye-opening experiences and I encourage each of you to travel abroad at some point. Furthermore, I encourage you to seek out and apply for scholarships. For both of the trips that I applied, for both of my trips, I applied for every scholarship that was available to me. And while I certainly did not get all of them, each time I had roughly half of my trip funded, which was no small relief on my bank account. I hope that you can see the running theme here, that IU East is quite prone to helping students achieve novel, exciting experiences. Throughout my time at IU East, I experienced an incredible sense of community and an eagerness to help students in any way possible. And I hope that your experience has been similar. As I'm sure you've deduced from my intro, I didn't continue on the path to primary research. And this is really for three reasons. First, I think, is because I'm the oldest child in a blue collar small business family. My dad's family business is in concrete and construction and my mom's family business is in heating, plumbing and cooling. I was taught from a very young age to always anticipate potential issues and work to mitigate them before they happen. As a result, I'm used to fixing problems and seeing immediate results. As an adult, I've really thrown myself into learning about politics and policy, and I really felt a strain with the disparity between research and policy. I can only liken the feeling to that of an IKEA instruction manual author. No matter how valiant their efforts to explain and troubleshoot for customers, the customers will nonetheless toss the manual the first chance they get and create hours, if not days of frustration for themselves. Second, which relates closely to the first reason, I would learn all of these cool things about the world through empirical research and literature reviews, only to put down the report or article and move on. I continually thought to myself, why didn't I know about this sooner? Why aren't more people using this to help more people? Of course, part of that was my, my naivety about how slowly change actually occurs. But yet I still found myself connecting what I learned in research and in classes and what I was doing in service learning, student leadership, and in my own personal life and wishing that I could use what I was learning to have a broader impact. The last reason that I shifted from psychological research production to legal application of research is that I finally adopted a bottom-up approach to my future rather than a top-down approach that I had maintained throughout undergrad. And really this is pretty ironic because that's the most basic principle of science. You learn from the evidence. You don't, don't start with an answer and then make the evidence match it. This transition occurred for me when I was accepted into master's feeder programs, but none of the clinical psychology PhD programs that I had applied to. One program was so kind as to send me two rejection letters just to make sure that I really got the message. Yeah, I'm sure that some of you are beginning to familiarize yourself with the process if you haven't already, but applying to PhD programs is a long, grueling process where you have to kind of hurry up and wait. As the kind of person who takes joy in planning, organizing, and knowing what my next step is going to be, you can imagine that I was thrown for a bit of a loop when this critical step in my plan didn't really work out. But you know what they say about the best laid plans, right? This period of uncertainty really forced me to reevaluate re my values, goals, and interests. As I thought about the parts of the previous four years that I really loved and really attached onto, I realized that it wasn't necessarily being in the classroom or the lab. It was the opportunities that doing those things opened up for me. It was encouraging the tutoring students through service learning. It was pointing IUE students to resources, working with campus administration, faculty, and staff to make positive change around campus. And it was going out and about in Richmond and being recognized by community leadership. Those were the experiences that stood out in my mind. And it dawned on me that maybe I would rather be connecting people to the practical results of research than conducting research itself. Now, please do not take the, the path that I chose for my skill set and my interests to mean that I value the practical results of research more than research itself. That would be absolutely nonsensical. 
I have many friends from my master's program who, who will be entering the counseling psychology PhD program at Ball State and could not be any more pleased with their trajectory. The time and effort that each of you have put into your presentations today is just the beginning of a foundation that will serve you very well throughout life. Regardless of what path life leads you on, you can be sure that your experience with research will always play a role. My unsolicited advice to all of you is to reject the ease of human self-sufficiency and that we are so good at propelling ourselves forward that we might never have to make a real decision about our future and to instead be intentional about where you are spending your time and energy. While you're at it, you should take a little bit of pressure off of yourself. <laughs> you do not need to have your whole life planned out right now. Pursue what interests you and take advantage of the opportunities that will doubtlessly present themselves. Take risk where you can, hopefully backed up by reason and evidence, but most importantly, utilize the force to be reckoned with that is IU East. There is a cultivated group of people, alumni, faculty, staff, peers, community leaders, who are here to see you succeed and see you satisfied with the choices that you have picked for yourself. As intelligent and capable as every single one of those people are, none of them have access to psychic powers. So you should make sure to ask for direction where you can use it. And this is all the more important as we go through this unprecedented time. So remember that you can always reach out to the Dean of Students, Amy Jarecki, if you find that you could use a little bit of extra support. Thank you all so much for your participation in Student Research Day and for joining us here online. I wish you all the very best. Now I'll turn it back over to Angie. Thank you, Cassidy. What a fabulous keynote and a wonderful way to kick off our day of student research and creative activity. I know that you'll all join me in thanking Cassidy and in just letting her know how inspirational, enlightening, and enthusiastic her presentation has left us this afternoon. And now for the most important part of our program, the award ceremony. Before we begin, let me just make a few comments about all of the presentations in general, the printable program that will become accessible for all students and faculty today, and the presentations and your access to being able to view everything, including the award winners later on in the week. So let me begin by, again, thanking all students who've completed research and who finished a presentation and submitted that to share with us today. Thank you to all of the faculty who have mentored these students. And thank you to all of the faculty who have served as judges. Heroic acts were performed in the last few days to make sure that all details were completed in time for the hour today and the award ceremony this afternoon. These presentations, again, will be accessible to everyone as soon as all presenters give us permission to share their work publicly. Each student presenter should have been sent a public release form that we're asking that you complete and return to us so that we can post your work. We'll get a printable program posted on the Student Research Day website so that you'll be able to read about all of the excellent presentations that were submitted for this year's program. Please come back and visit the Student Research Day website later on this week, and you'll find everything there that you're looking for. Again, thank you to everyone who has contributed to making Student Research Day 2020 possible. All of the presentations were amazing, interesting. I wanna announce the awards at this time and I'll be announcing the award winner. And I'll be attempting to correctly read the titles of all of the presentations. But just like every year, some of those scientific terms are just a little tricky to pronounce correctly. So I'll ask in advance for your forgiveness if by chance I mispronounce anything in any of the titles of our award winners today. Let me begin by announcing the winners of the poster presentation. And uh, just to preface as well, award winners are um, going to be conferred in uh, three different place categories 
first place, second place, third place. And we also this year have added a category of honorable mention. There was just so much excellent work. We wanted to account for all of it. Really, all of the participants are award winners. These are just some that the judges felt were worthy of being showcased today. But all of the student presenters did excellent work for us this afternoon. All right, with no further ado, poster presentations. The poster presentations this year were, of course, virtual posters. So they took the form of lightly narrated PowerPoint presentations. And again, the topics and themes spanned a wide variety in all different schools and departments. Coming in for honorable mention in the poster presentation category, Fallon Pope. The title, Sustainability Reports Across Industries. In third place in poster presentation, Donovan Chang. The title, Mathematical Modeling of Saving and Loaning Using Differential Equations. Second place in poster presentations, Audrey Meyer, The Impact of Disease in South Bronx. First place in the poster presentations, Claire Presson the effects of adolescence on boys and girls. Again, I invite you to come back to our site and view these presentations when we've received all the releases and we've posted those. I know that like me, you'll enjoy and be enlightened by all that the students have to share with you in this work. Okay, drum roll please. And now the winners in the category of oral presentations. And let me just make clear for all of my honors students who completed thesis work out there, you're in a different category here in a second. So don't worry just yet. These oral presentations were completed by students in a non-honors thesis setting. Here we go. Honorable mention in the oral presentation category. First, Kaylin. Crumpton, the title, Vessel Efficiency in the Craig's Marine, and second, honorable mention, Heidi Klein, Student Research Day Poetry Performance. Third place in the oral presentations, Olivia Rickman, the title of her presentation, the Walking Dead Poetry Collection. Second place in the oral presentations, Sarah Acton, Nursing Students' Self-Awareness of Hispanic Culture. First place in the oral presentations, Tanner Potterbaugh, Classical Music After Dark. Congratulations to all of the winners in the poster presentation and oral presentation category. And again, I'll invite all of you back to hear these presentations as soon as they're posted on our site. Last but certainly not least, honor students who've completed a thesis project. And again, these thesis projects are longer extended research pieces of work competed against each other and placed their judging panel being comprised of the Honors Program Planning Committee. Thank you very much to those faculty members who served as judges as well. And now the winners amongst the Honors Thesis Students 2020. Coming in, honorable mention, Claire Parks. And Claire's title to her presentation, Douglas T. Kenrick Literary Comparison. Third place, honors thesis work, Casey Farmer, Processes of Globalization in Spain. There was a tie for second place among the honors thesis projects. Those two students who tied were Savannah Lynch, Chloroplast Development from the Dark to the Light, in a couple of words, I'll just let you read in the program. And second, also placing in second place, Claire Eckstein, 
female composers, the music that must be heard. Our final award today, first place, honors thesis, goes to Cassidy Whitehead. Cannabis use and digressions in decision-making, a focus on delay discounting. I know that you all join me in congratulating all of our student presenters, all of our student researchers today. Again, thank you for joining us at the first ever virtual Student Research Day 2020. We will have all the presentations posted for you later in the week. We will have the program posted for you in just a few hours. So please come back to our site, read more about this excellent work completed by our students. And maybe most importantly, please join us back here next year for our upcoming program, Student Research Day 2021. I'll see you then. Students, and maybe most importantly, please join us back here next year for our upcoming program, Student Research Day, 2021. I'll see you then. Students, and maybe most importantly, please join us back here next year for our upcoming program, Student Research Day 2021. I'll see you then. Day 2021. I'll see you then.